In this video, we'll see how to create a process landscape and make connections to other processes. We will also see how to use a process landscape as the homepage of the portal to customize the layout of BPMN 2.0 process documentation. First we go to the process editor, where we are going to create a new process. We saw in a previous video that we can create a new process by clicking on New Diagram in the Process Search screen. It is also possible to create one by clicking on the plus at the top right of the screen. We will create a Process Landscape type process to highlight the company's value chain. I click on Process Landscape, give a name and click on Confirm to create it. We are then redirected to the Process Editing screen. We can find the three parts of this screen with some differences. Indeed, we have the central part to model the process and the different options available on the right. On the left we also have elements that allow us to model but they are not BPMN 2.0 type elements. This is a free notation that highlights the value chain and the organization of the company. You can use elements to model a diagram, add text to it, and even add images. If you click on the Properties tab at the process level, then you will see options similar to what we have seen for BPMN 2.0 processes. For this type of process, it is possible to add a background image to provide more personalization. To do this, you must click on Background Image. We are going to choose an image. We must also choose the background style that most closely matches our modeling wish. There are several choices. In general, we advise you to choose scale so that the image adapts to the dimensions of your screen. We now have a background image. We can then start modeling the company's value chain using the different elements available on the left side. As with elements in BPMN 2.0 processes, we can simply select an element and drag it to where we want to place it. We can also copy and paste an element already in place by selecting it and making a C control, and then a V control. We continue to put in place the different elements that will make up our diagram. We are now going to customize our first elements by giving them a name and changing their appearance. There are two methods to change the name of an element. We can double click on the element in question, or click on the element, go to the Properties tab and then to the Text section. We can now format our elements. For this, we select an element and we go to the Properties tab, and then to the Appearance part. Different options are available in this part. You can change the element's background color, the element's text font size, and even the text color. I make some changes to format my element. I'm going to choose gray for the background color, and set a font size of 40. I will now choose the documentation element and modify its appearance by choosing a red background color.
and a font size of 40. We are going to change the name and appearance of the other elements of our diagram. We have finished formatting our diagram. As we said at the beginning of this video, the goal is to put this type of process on the homepage of our portal. But before doing that we have to create links with the different existing processes in this environment. The interest of the process landscape is to allow your user to trigger actions when he clicks on one of these elements. There are different types of possible actions to configure. For example, it would be interesting to make available to the user a text about the objective of this diagram when he clicks on the welcome element, or that he can access documents to download when he clicks on documentation. Or that he can find all the processes documentation of the human resources category when he clicks on human resources. We will now see how to configure this type of action. First of all we have to click on the concerned element. We are going to click on the welcome element. We go to the Properties tab. There is an option only available for process landscapes. This is the option, Item Click Action. We will click on this option. As you can see, there are different actions to set up. That None option, as its name implies, aims to not trigger an action when the user clicks on the concerned element. The other four options trigger an action. We will start with the Show Documentation option. The objective is to display the associated textual documentation when the user clicks on this element. We will add textual documentation to the Welcome element. We click on Confirm. When this process landscape will be published and set as the home page of the portal, the user will then see the associated textual documentation when he will click on the Welcome element. We are now going to click on the Documentation element and present another possible action. There is the Preview and Download Attachments option. This makes it possible to display the associated attachments and to download them when the user clicks on the element concerned. We are going to click on the Attachments tab and add files to the Documentation element. We will select several documents for our example. When the process landscape will be published and set as the home page, the user will then be able to view and download these attachments by clicking on the documentation item. Now click on the administration element. We will now use the process navigation option. The objective is to have access to the documentation of a published process or a list of processes, when the user clicks on the concerned element. It is then necessary to select the process or processes by clicking on Linked Processes. There are then three options. You can link to a particular process. The aim is to be redirected to its documentation when you click on the element. I specify that the process option concerns only BPMN 2.0 type processes. For our example, I'm going to select the travel request process. This configuration then makes it possible to be redirected to the documentation of the travel request process when we click on the administration element. We can also make the link with all the processes of a category.
In one of our previous videos, we have associated different categories with our processes. The objective here is then to display the list of documentation for each process in this category. We can choose the Administration category for our example. With this configuration, we will then have access to the list of all the processes that belong to this category, and to access the documentation of one of these processes, it will be then enough to click on the name of the desired process. There is also the possibility of linking to another process landscape. In our case, the list of available processes is empty because we are currently on the only available process landscape in our environment. We'll cover this option in more detail later in this video. Headflow also allows you to link an item to multiple processes. For example, let's say you haven't made any categories, but you want to link this item to a list of processes. I will choose the Process option and put the Travel Request process again. We can click on Add Linked Processes. From there, we will be able to add another process, and for our example we will choose the Reimbursement of Expenses process. With this configuration, when the user clicks on the concerned element, he will have access to a list made up of these two processes. Then he can choose to be redirected to the documentation of one of these two processes by clicking on the one that interests him. We can also choose a process and a process category. It is also possible to link the element to two categories. In our example we put the customer category and the finance category. If we leave the configuration like this, the user will then be able to access the list of processes of these two categories by clicking on the Administration item. In our case, we will only link the Administration element to the Administration category. In our environment, only one process is currently associated with this category. In this case, when the user clicks on this element, he will then be redirected directly to the documentation of the process of this category. It is interesting to link an element to a category, because if you add processes in this category, Heflow will automatically take this into account in the links of the process landscape. We will now link the other elements to the category that corresponds to them. There is another type of action. This is the task navigation action. This is a useful action for large process landscapes. Indeed, the user must sometimes use the sidebar to access all the elements of the process landscape. This option then makes it possible to improve this navigation. The objective is then to link the selected element to another element of the same process. When the user clicks on the element, he will then be redirected to the target element. In our case, we're not going to use this action because our goal is to see our entire process landscape in full screen, without needing to move up and down or left and right. We have seen how to add a background image. Headflow also allows you to add images to personalize your diagram. To do this, you must click on the image type element on the left side, and you must drag it to the place where you want to add it. Then you must select the element and go to the Properties tab. You can then click on the plus button to add an image or click on the arrow to see the images available in your environment. If no images are available, it means that you have not yet added any images in your various process landscapes of your environment. We will click on the plus button. 
I will add an image. I have to name it. We have the possibility to modify its size. As for the other elements that we have seen previously, it is possible to associate an action with this image. In our case, we are not going to configure an action. We have now finished modeling this process landscape. As I said before, the goal for this process landscape is to be fully visible in full screen. We can ensure this by going to the process properties. We must then go to the portal section. There are several options for determining the zoom of the process on the portal. We advise you to choose the Zoom to Fit All option. This option will then determine the dimensions of the process landscape so that it is visible in full screen. There are other options to achieve different goals. In our case, we are going to choose the Zoom to Fit All option. Now that we have finished modeling and configuring this process landscape, we can then publish it and set it as the home page of the portal. We go to the Actions tab. As with BPMN 2.0 processes, there are different types of actions. We have already seen these different actions in previous videos. There is a difference from BPMN 2.0 processes regarding the export and import part of the process. Indeed this type of process will be exported with a dot .landscape extension. And the import of this type of process can only be done with files that also have a dot .landscape extension. We will now click on Publish Documentation. From then on, our process landscape is published in the portal. Heflow automatically sets this process as the home page of the portal because no other process landscape is currently set as the home page. In the Actions tab you have the possibility to no longer set this process landscape as your homepage by clicking on this button. If you click this button, then this process landscape will still be available in the portal, but the portal format will revert to the list of processes that exists by default. This option is useful if you want to set another process landscape as the portal homepage. In our case, we want to set this process landscape as the home page, so we will click on Set as Portal Home. We can go to the process portal to see this new home page. As you can see, our process landscape has replaced the process list. We will now be able to check the different actions that we have configured. We are going to click on Welcome. The system then displays the textual documentation that we have defined. We are now going to click on Documentation. We have the list of attachments displayed and we have the option to download them. We will now see the navigation through the different linked processes. As we have seen previously, the administration element is linked to the administration category. This category currently consists of a single process. We are going to click on the administration element. We are then redirected to the documentation of the process concerned. 
you can click on the process landscape name in the upper left to go back to it. We are going to click on the human resources element. The human resources category, which is associated with this element, is composed of several processes. We then have access to the list of all the processes of this category. To access the documentation for one of these processes, simply click on the desired process. We click on the name of the process landscape at the top left to return to our home page. We can improve this process landscape. For instance, when I click on the customer item, it may be interesting to replace this list of processes with another process landscape to further personalize the portal. We will go back to the process editor. We are going to create a new process landscape. We will call it customer. To start, we will put a background image. I will choose scale as background style. We can add three elements that will correspond to the three BPMN processes of the customer category. We can also name these elements with the theme corresponding to the target process. We can improve the appearance of these elements. We can choose predefined colors or define a color. We will choose a font size of 65. We can now link each element to the corresponding process. We are going to click on the sales element. We then go to the properties. We choose the process navigation option and click on linked processes. We can now link this element to the sales process. We will follow this logic for the other two elements. We have configured the desired actions for our three elements. Now we go to the process landscape properties to set the portal zoom. We are going to choose the zoom to fit all option. Our process landscape is now ready to be published in the portal. We go to the actions tab and we can click on Publish Documentation. Unlike the first process landscape, this one is not set as the home page of the portal. Why? As we specified previously, when publishing a process landscape, 
Heflo automatically sets it as the home page only if no other process landscape is already defined as such. In our case, we already have a process landscape that is set as the home page of the portal. The system then simply publishes this process landscape in the portal. You still have the possibility to replace the existing home page with this process landscape by clicking on Set as Portal Home. In our case, we want to keep our first process landscape as the home of the portal. So we'll leave it like that. It lacks a configuration to achieve the desired behavior. Our goal is to be redirected to this process landscape when we click on the customer element of our first process landscape. We therefore need to modify the action defined on the element concerned. We return to our first process landscape. You can modify the various actions defined even if the process landscape is already published. We select the customer element and we go to the properties. We can click on linked processes. We will modify what is defined. We will choose process landscape instead of category. Our new process landscape, customer, is available. We can select it and click Confirm. We go to the portal to verify this configuration. We click on the Customer element. As you can see, we are well redirected to the customer process landscape. You can go back by clicking on the name of the previous process landscape in the top left. This feature is very interesting when you have several levels of process links. Let's click again on the customer element. We are now going to click on the support element. We are then redirected to the documentation of the desired process. As you can see, you have the possibility to go back to the customer process landscape or even to the previous process landscape, which is my company. We return to the home page of the portal. Even if you have defined a process landscape as your home page, Heflo leaves the possibility for the user to use the process search functionality. We have completed the part of the course concerning the modeling, publishing of documentation, process improvement and customization of the portal. In the next video we will see how to manage Heflow environment. We will learn more about the licensing system and user roles. We will also see how to invite users into an environment. Goodbye and see you next lesson.